Hi, thank you for watching information for pregnant women attending antenatal visits at the Maternal and Child Health Centers produced by the Department of Health. In this session, we will provide information about antenatal checkup procedures at MCHCs, points to note during checkups, application for sick leave certificate, health talks, warning signs during pregnancy, and the prevention of infectious diseases. To ensure you are receiving proper care, the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at the HA Hospitals and the Maternal and Child Health Centers of the Department of Health join hands to provide antenatal checkups and health care services throughout your pregnancy and during delivery. MCHCs offer free checkups for Hong Kong residents. Generally, pregnant women will receive follow-up care at a MCHC after having been assessed at the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology of an HA hospital or the MCHC. For high-risk cases, like those who have twin pregnancy, diabetes, or other obstetric complications, will receive follow-up care at the hospital. While receiving antenatal care at MCHC, pregnant women may also be transferred back to the hospital for follow-up care if necessary. If you have not registered your pregnancy at the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology of an HA hospital, you will have your first checkup scheduled during the 10th to 14th week of pregnancy. At your first checkup, the nurse will obtain your personal information, such as your health status and that of your family, as well as your obstetric history. This information helps us better comprehend your health status so that we can arrange the best appropriate care for you promptly. The nurse will also assess the health status of you and your fetus, measure your body height and body weight, test your urine sample and measure your blood pressure. The doctor will then perform a physical examination, which includes examination of the heart, lungs, and abdomen. A gynecological examination will also be performed if necessary. If you are at 12 weeks of pregnancy or more, the doctor will also check the fetal heartbeat. A blood sample would be taken at your first antenatal checkup. A blood test includes blood type, rhesus factor, hemoglobin level, mean cell volume, rubella antibodies, hepatitis B antigens, syphilis, and HIV antibodies. For more information, you may also refer to the Antenatal Blood Investigations Information Leaflet. If you have already undergone a checkup and have had a blood sample taken at the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology of an HA hospital, you won't need another blood sample test or see the doctor at the MCHC. Under normal circumstances, subsequent follow-ups are carried out once every four to six weeks before the 28th week of pregnancy, once every two to four weeks for pregnancies at 28 to 36 weeks, and once every one to two weeks for pregnancies after 36 weeks. The Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology of an HA hospital or the MCHC may make other appropriate arrangements based on individual health conditions. At each checkup, healthcare professionals will assess your health status, including weight gain, blood pressure, urine tests for glucose or sugar, and protein. The nurse or midwife will also examine your uterus and monitor the fetal heartbeat. For pregnancies at 32 weeks or after, the fetal position will also be examined. If necessary, you will be arranged to see the doctor. If your physical examination is normal, the antenatal checkup procedure is completed. Finally, the nurse will arrange the next follow-up for you. Don't forget your follow-up card before you leave. Make sure to visit the MCHC on schedule with your follow-up card and a urine sample. If you have been given the antenatal record, bring that along as well. The employment ordinance stipulates that absence from work for antenatal checkups shall be a sickness day. You may apply for either a certificate of attendance or a sick leave certificate from the doctor, whichever is appropriate. Please note that a certificate of attendance may not be accepted by some employers as a proof for sick leave. 
some employers only accept sick leave certificates. Therefore, you need to check with your employer about their policy beforehand. An administrative fee will be charged for requesting certificate of attendance or a sick leave certificate subsequently on days other than on the day you receive the service. If your company requires a certificate for the expected date of delivery, please inform the nurse during the antenatal visits. Let's talk about the key points on measuring body weight and blood pressure. A pregnant woman's body weight reflects both the health status of the mother and the fetus, and therefore body weight is required to be measured at every checkup. To ensure accuracy, you are advised to wear similar clothing in terms of thickness and number of pieces at every visit. In cold weather, take off your coat before having your body weight measured. Your blood pressure will also be measured at every visit. Wear wide sleeve clothing so that you can roll up your sleeves for an accurate blood pressure measurement. Antenatal checkup also includes a urine test. By checking for glucose and protein in the urine, health problems such as diabetes or preeclampsia during pregnancy can be identified promptly. This enables an arrangement of early follow-up and management. To collect a urine sample, you need a clean bottle. A wide mouth bottle is the best choice because you can urinate directly into the bottle. If you use a bottle with a small opening, you may urinate into a disposable paper cup and then pour the urine into the bottle. The bottle cap should be tightly closed to prevent leakage. A urine sample should be collected in the early morning. Fully release the first early morning urine immediately after getting out of bed then drink some water and collect a sample of the second urine before you have had a breakfast. Have you ever heard of proteinuria? Proteinuria is the presence of protein in the urine. A number of factors will cause proteinuria. Improper urine sample collection is the most common cause. For example, a urine sample contaminated with vaginal secretions reduces the accuracy of the test result and this will make the healthcare professionals unable to accurately assess your health status. As a urinary tract infection and preeclampsia may also cause proteinuria, it is important that you cleanse your genitals thoroughly before collecting the urine sample. Let's watch a demonstration of cleaning of genitals. Clean your vulva with a wet cotton wool pad or tissue paper to remove any vaginal discharge. Wipe from front to rear. Each wipe should be done with a new wet cotton wool pad or tissue paper. When collecting the urine sample, omit the first and last part of your urine flow. Try to catch the midstream urine and keep in a container. This helps minimize the likelihood of proteinuria in the test result because of presence of vaginal secretions in the urine sample. Perhaps you may ask whether the presence of glucose in urine indicates gestational diabetes mellitus. In fact, it is normal that a pregnant woman's urine contains a small amount of glucose due to hormonal changes during pregnancy. In this case, the doctor may require a blood sample for an accurate diagnosis. Generally, Pregnant women with high risk factors for gestational diabetes mellitus will need a blood glucose test. Risk factors include history of diabetes in first degree relatives, age 35 or over, overweight, or history of gestational diabetes mellitus, or having given birth to a baby of 4 kilograms or above. These pregnant women will have a higher chance of gestational diabetes mellitus. The healthcare professionals will decide when a pregnant woman should undergo such a test. Pregnant women diagnosed with gestational diabetes mellitus are required to adhere to appropriate dietary control. Some of them may also need medications. Serious health problems such as hypertension or preterm labor may result if appropriate treatment is not received promptly. Perhaps you would like to know how to deal with warning signs during pregnancy. Vaginal bleeding or lower abdominal pain in early pregnancy may be an early sign of an abortion, which is also known as a threatened abortion. Miscarriages, ectopic pregnancies, and molar pregnancies, however, have similar symptoms. 
Be careful if you have these symptoms and seek medical advice promptly. If you have vaginal bleeding during mid or late pregnancy, that is, after the 24th week of pregnancy, it is referred as antepartum bleeding. It may be due to placenta previa, accidental bleeding, or other non-placental problems. If bleeding occurs in areas connecting the placenta and the uterus, this may harm the fetus due to insufficient oxygen supply, leading to reduced blood flow to the placenta. Seek medical advice promptly if bleeding occurs. Preeclampsia can occur during the mid or late pregnancy period. Protein in the urine and high blood pressure may be detected during the checkups. Severe headaches, swelling of the feet, or blurred vision may also occur. As preeclampsia can seriously affect the health of both the mother and the baby, you should seek medical advice promptly if you develop any of these symptoms. Generally, first-time mothers may feel the baby move during the 20th week. A baby's movements may start at around the 18th week for those who are pregnant for the second time or more. Movements happen more often as the baby grows. After 28 weeks, if you feel that the baby's movement decreases significantly, seek medical advice promptly. What are labor contractions? Signs of labor contractions include labor pains, vaginal bleeding, and ruptured membranes. Labor pain refers to persistent abdominal pains that become more regular, stronger in intensity, and increasingly at shorter intervals. Vaginal bleeding refers to blood-stained fluids coming out of the vagina. Water breaks means amniotic fluid leaks from the amnion which surrounds the baby. Fluid may come out of the vagina gradually, in a large amount or scantily. When the amnion is ruptured, the bacteria can enter the uterus and cause an infection to the baby. If a large amount of amniotic fluid is leaking, there is possibility of umbilical cord compression by the fetal head. In this case, it is life-threatening to the baby. If this happens, the pregnant woman should immediately sit or lie down still and stay calm. She should be sent to the hospital promptly in an ambulance. In conclusion, if you have come across any warning signs during pregnancy, please go to the A&E department or see an obstetrician promptly. Do not go to a MCHC because they don't have the appropriate facilities to handle such emergencies. Never wait until the next visit to the MCHC because it will cause a delay for treatment. If it is close to the expected date of delivery, go directly to the admission ward or labor ward if you have any signs of labor contractions. Pregnant women should protect themselves against infectious diseases such as rubella, chickenpox, and the fifth disease. These diseases are highly infectious and are transmitted by droplets from an infected person or through direct contact with an infected person's secretions. A mother who was infected with these diseases during pregnancy will have adverse impact on the fetal health. For example, congenital abnormalities such as deafness, blindness, or mental retardation will result. In the worst scenario, this may lead to fetal death. In fact, Almost all women develop lifelong immunity after the infection or vaccination in childhood, so please relax. The symptoms of these infectious diseases are usually mild and alike. Patients usually present with mild fever, fatigue, and rashes. If you have influenza, a cold, or generalized discomfort, please visit a general outpatient clinic or consult your family doctor. Never take medications without a doctor's advice. Prevention is better than cure. It is important to maintain personal hygiene. Wash your hands frequently. Cover your mouth and nose with tissue paper when sneezing or coughing. Dispose of tissue paper soiled with secretions from the mouth and nose properly in a lidded rubbish bin. Keep your home clean with good ventilation. Avoid going to crowded or poorly ventilated public places. This helps reduce the chance of infection. A balanced diet and adequate physical activities are also important. All these things will enhance your immunity. If you have a history of contact with an infected person, or if you have symptoms like fever, 
fatigue, or rashes, please visit a general outpatient clinic, the private doctor's clinic, or the A&E department. To prevent cross-infection to other pregnant women, do not visit MCHC. If you have queries, please call the MCHC or the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology of the hospital so that appropriate arrangements can be made prior to the consultation. If you have queries, please feel free to inquire at the MCHC or with other healthcare professionals. For more health information, please call the 24-hour information hotline at 2112-9900 or visit the website at www.fhs.gov.hk, a family health service of the Department of Health.